Shara Rose is a singer, songwriter, and professional dancer. So music is in all aspects of her life. She's originally from Perth and now lives in New South Wales. This year, she's been on tour with Jason Owen and Tanya Kernigan, and she's been releasing singles, Coming Home, and the latest Four Chords song. Hi, Shara. Hello, Sophie. How are you? I'm it's I'm very well, thank you. I almost stumbled over that. Great to meet you. <laughs> Great to meet you as well. Zoom's always a little bit strange. I've got to start with um the tour though, because uh I think that it's been an extensive run of dates. So how's it been going? It's amazing. Yeah, we've been um we've been touring the Hits from Home tour with Jason Owen, um, which is the second tour this year we've done. Um mm. so we had the Tanya Kernigan and Jason Owen um, right. show earlier this year, which was amazing. And I got to play with a band. Um, so I'm, I'm just opening the show for them. So at a band, which was super fun and playing my um, playing my new songs with a band is always super cool because I I write them like with the guitar and me, but they get produced with like a full sound. So actually hearing that live, it's still like, oh, this is so cool. It's how it's produced and it sounds the same. Um, but then, yeah, then Hits From Home Tour has been for the last couple of months, which has been really fun. Jason Owen's um, amazing to be on the road with. He's, he's exactly how he seems, just this great, just happy, kind country, country boy. So um, absolute pleasure to be on the road with him. And we have a great friendship now. So it's pretty cool. Imagine as exciting as it is to get a tour like that or two tours as it's been this year, it's a big commitment, right? Because it's it's quite a bit of time away. It's quite a lot of moving yourself around and travel is not always that much fun. So when when you were going on that first tour, did you know that the second tour was coming up or was that, that something that came up because of well, that the, first tour? Yeah, well, the first tour actually was last year. So that was oh, 2022, okay. which was okay. the Jason Owen Sings John Denver right. um, tour, which was an acoustic show. So it was just... Um, me, J- Jason and I, and then a guitarist or two. Um, um, so that was, that was like every second weekend for like okay. nine months. So that, wow. was, that was a big commitment, but that was like, oh, okay, this is actually happening. You know, like um, touring for the first time was just so exciting. So I was like, oh, clear my schedule, um, mm-hmm. you know, for the weekends. It doesn't matter what it is. I'm, I'm going on this tour. So um, from the start, it was definitely like, a massive change in my schedule and what I was doing, but it was an opportunity. I was like, I'm not turning this down. Absolutely no way. Um, and it's been really great. So then the second tour came kind of from that, but I didn't know if he's going to like ask me to be on the tour. I wasn't sure. Um, but he keeps asking me, which is, which has been great for the last two years. So it's officially been two years um, opening for Jason Owen. So it's um, yeah, I'm very, very, very lucky very very lucky yeah and of course the really important question is how do you work out where the good coffee is in every place you travel to <laughs> i don't drink coffee oh drink there you coffee. Go. <laughs> I'm, I'm a tea drinker i bring my tea on the road i have my little tea bags i get my hot water and that's the solution I, uh, actually yeah, bring the tea on the road absolutely yeah. i know instant coffee you can't really do that people don't like drinking coffee like out of the bag so i don't need to worry about that i'm good with my tea and um yeah i'm easy that way well, then I should ask, are you a black tea or a green tea drinker? Oh, black tea. English breakfast um, and then chai, but always a bit of milk. Yeah, I never drink it black ever. Yeah, I can't I can't do like green tea, all these hair. I can't, can't do it. I don't know. Not my thing. But yeah, English breakfast is my go-to. I completely understand. <laughs> um, is there anywhere you've been on this tour that is a place you thought you'd never get to visit in your life? Well, the thing about me is that because I'm from WA, I don't know many of these places so I've actually have seen more of New South Wales than I have of WA because you don't tend to travel that much around all these country towns unless you have a reason to go um and so I have seen so much of this state like places like Harden and Moela like down the border it's like eight hours from New South Wales or Sydney um you know I've been to Dubbo that many times that Mm -hmm. I can can get around there and I'm like I know where I'm going now you know um because Jason's from there so we've been there every tour um so that's been fun like Forbes and gosh there's so many places there's so many places but I wouldn't get to see much of where we go to be honest um I mainly remember the venues and the and the crowds, yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing. But there, we've gone through places as well, like tiny, like Tottenham, and like little things like that, and like the Bogan Shire, which <laughs> I never knew existed. And they have these big, the big Bogan and things like that. That it's like, okay, this is different. But I mean, they they're doing that, and I love that. And yeah, definitely seen some things that I didn't know were there. 
and didn't expect, but going to country towns, they are so lovely. Like every place we've been, the people that we get to meet, I get to go out and like meet them at meet and greet afterwards. And they are all so lovely. So definitely we'll be going back to country towns. Like I can't think of anywhere that I haven't enjoyed playing, to be honest. Fantastic. Yeah. And in between all those shows, are you actually doing some gigs just on your own? In between, you probably don't need to because you've been playing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I definitely am. So um, cause I'm a dancer as well. So I I do like dance shows in a company. So um, a lot of the time I do Friday night show, Saturday night show on tour, and then I come home and we'll do like a Sunday night show if I, if I can muffle up the energy. Um, right. So I definitely keep myself busy but then um I do a lot of like festival kind of places especially now it's coming to spring a lot of festivals happen so um festivals like private events that get asked to come and do things like that so I haven't done obviously as many as I've been touring most weekends but um definitely when I'm off tour yeah I do a lot of festivals a lot of events a lot of council events as well things like that um yeah different things yeah a lot going on and I imagine with the different types of of shows you've been playing just with Jason even um you've had to learn how to adapt your energy levels to the show so over the, you know, the tour last year where it was the two of you and a, and a guitar that's different to a full band show was yeah. it a bit of an adjustment when you started doing that oh absolutely like I I don't get too nervous because you know how you do something so many times it's like oh yeah great I still get butterflies but doing with a band I was nervous um I was like okay this is a whole different kind of ball game and the boys on the band were like, you know what? You could take a guitar off and like not use your guitar for the first couple of songs and just sing with a mic. And I was like, I love that. I've always wanted to kind of be able to do that. But I'm like, I get on stage and I feel naked. I'm like, I don't know what to do with my hands. And I'm like, I'm a dancer. I actually know what to do, but it's just a different situation when you're singing live yeah. and you have to move around and then you don't have any way of hiding at all. You're just there and you have to move and not look awkward. So that was a little bit getting used to for the first couple of times. But now it's like, oh, yeah, absolutely, uh, good times. And I can run around the stage and dance and point people out in the audience, getting to sing back to me and things like that. So I definitely learn how to be a better performer on the job. And, like, what I've learned the last two years been on tour of, like, working with a band, working with other guitarists, working with, and doing duets, you know, doing harmonies and all that kind of stuff with Jason, like, could not buy that experience like it's just been amazing and I've, I've definitely become a better performer for it just being able to do it repetitively show after show and learn different things and do things differently and get better at my little chatter in between songs and just things like that that you don't get to do unless you try and yeah. get the experience so it's been yeah absolutely like amazing for me to be able to be in there consistently performing like that it does almost seem like a degree in performance. Not yeah. about, I was going to say performance boot camp, but that's not right because boot camp is like an intense spurt of stuff. Yeah. This, this has yeah. been a couple of years. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like a prac almost. Like I went to uni, I, I did prac, and I'm like, it's like it's like a you learn on the job. Like you can you can practice in your room as much as you like. You can practice in front of the mirror as much as you like. When you're on the stage and you have an audience in front of you wanting to like see a show, and my whole job is to get them excited and ready for Jason that's my whole job is to get them excited and like let's go get ready for a great show and so I have to do that well um and so it's like learning how to do that interacting and making them laugh and making them sing along and choosing a set list like it's like Mm -hmm. you can sit there and you can practice it all you like when you're actually in front of them that's where you learn what works and what doesn't um very quickly (laughs) Well, that also would require you to be comfortable leaping without a net, I guess, to an extent, because you're. it sounds like you are willing to try different things. You're willing to, as you said, to you know, your, your stage patter is changing and um, and just the whole idea that that you're somewhat in service to the bigger show, as you said, you're there yeah. to warm up for Jason. So have you always been like that as a dancer, for example, that you go into a performance thinking, well, I need to be prepared for things to change here because dance can be quite constrained if you've got a ballet background you know, everything's very precise, but it sounds like, well, maybe not. Maybe, maybe you like that despite your dad's background. <laughs> I think, I think it's um, like for me personally, like the chattering in between always made me nervous before I had to do it. Because when you're doing like pub gigs, things like that, you don't necessarily do that as much, kind of like a jukebox sometimes in those gigs. So you just play song, 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 song. So the music part of things wasn't too much. It was the talking in between that I was always like, 
oh, you know. And the thing is, I'm not like, you know, some artists are really funny and like quick and like witty. I'm not, I don't have that skill. I'm not, I'm not like funny or doing jokes. And I'm not like, you know, like cool and suave. I was like, I'm kind of this quirky kind of, um, I think I'm kind of like funny and awkward sometimes. So I just kind of lead into that. And that seemed to work. People think, people laugh along with me, you know, I'm just really authentic and real. Um, and I think that's the way to be. I think as an artist, if you're real, it's a lot easier. And if you're being fake, they can see it. And eventually it wears off as well. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do me and chatter and say certain things and talk to the audience. And that's that's been what's worked. So I'm less nervous about that now. Um, but yeah, definitely was something that I was like, oh, I don't know. You know, you can't <laughs> prepare for that. You're going to say the little things you want to talk about, but when you're actually on there and people are staring at you being like entertain me it's like you have to be quick and figure out what you want to say so that's definitely something that you learn and figure out in the moment sometimes as well yeah i mean yeah. interesting what you said about um, what happened when your guitar was taken off you for the first for the first little while because you know being a dancer means being really at home in your body and knowing how to use it in performance yeah. how to convey a story to the crowd but it's almost like a the head and the, the body separated at that point. It was like, I'm yeah. not a dancer in this moment. In fact, yeah. nothing about my dance background applies anymore. So, so yeah. it's more interesting than anything. It's not a um, yeah. question per se, but yeah, I just found that so fascinating. It's like all that training gone in an instant. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't have a routine. I don't have anything planned. Like I definitely feel like I have an advantage because I mean, as a dancer, you're more aware of your body. So you move probably a little bit less awkwardly as like, if you didn't have that. Mm. And so um I definitely felt more awkward than I probably looked but I was like oh I don't know what to do with my hands and you want to be like this you want to be open you don't want to be too open so it's like what do you do and like if I dress okay am I stepping too but you know all these things you're thinking about and you're singing a song and it's like just be in the moment Shara and just be here and just relax and just sing like you would if you're at home in front of your mirror like you practice a thousand times um that all kind of goes away when you're in the moment and people are staring at you but yeah. I am one person like I I thrive performing live like I can't be a studio artist for that reason like I can't be someone that just sings in a studio I need like the buzz and mm -hmm. so I figured it out pretty quickly but like I was watching myself on film and I was like oh my goodness I, I didn't think I looked like that you know I thought I looked a lot more engaging and it was just learning how to like you know be a little bit more okay like I'm, I'm here not okay what do I do you know? <laughs> it's fun but it's a good thing I get that I got that experience and it was in a it was a low pressure environment really yeah. and I had a lot of people supporting me and it was all good but um yeah definitely just different but now I love it now I love being able to move around and um putting the guitar down for a couple of songs and be able to you know move around and walk on the side of the stage because when you're you're just stuck in one spot with the guitar you can't move at all so yeah. get to explore around and yeah it's good yeah. So your musical life, because dance is an expression of musicality through the body, um, did it start with dance when you were young or did, did you, or were you a natural born performer and sort of like you just found a way to express yourself as a kid? Yeah, I, I don't remember wanting to do anything else, to be honest. Right. I don't remember, like I remember being like 12, 13 and I would write out lyrics of the music I liked so I could learn them. And I would have like files of song lyrics of like all these songs I liked. And then I would like put on little performances and make all my family watch me. And <laughs> then they'd bring that more family. Everyone has to watch me again and you'll have to enjoy it and you have to applaud. And I get my siblings and choreograph routines with them and I'd be singing that I go into dancing. So it's just always been what I wanted to do which is why it's so cool now being like hey I like it actually we're doing it and there's people actually there that want to see a show <laughs> <laughs> which is cool but it's always been kind of both together I mm -hmm. think I don't remember ever wanting to do one or the other it's been kind of I think sometimes in my life I've like gone into more like okay cool let's work on my singing then let's work on my dance depending on what I was doing as well um and the space I was in but they've always kind of gone like side by side um right forever I, I don't I don't think I could choose one or the other I think I'm I need to do both right. in some way so I'm I'm pretty lucky that I get to do both as a job um at the moment so it's yeah definitely very cool so those songs whose lyrics you were writing out which songs were they what song what music were you listening to when you were growing oh, up gosh I think it was a mix of so many 
uh, like so many artists, so many genres. Like um, I was a big Swift fan. I, like back then when she was really coming up and she was like, it's the storytelling that got me. Like that's what I love about her writing. And that's kind of how I've write, kind of started writing as well. Um, and then it was like, you know, your classics like Keith Urban, like Carrie Underwood, like all these pe- kind of people. I was never um, never really exposed like the older kind of music. Mm. Um, but it was kind of my sister, what she was listening to, and I just copy her. And I go, oh, what are you listening to? Oh, what are you listening to? So it was like all that kind of thing. But yeah, so many, so many artists from like pop country. Like I, I, I don't, I get bored easily. So I like to be constantly like getting things from different kind of um, genres. So mm. I'm still the same way. Like my playlists are a mix of whatever I kind of feel like listening to and what kind of you know mood I'm in. It's very, mm. very driven of what mood I'm in. I like, don't <laughs> want to cry today. Don't want to be happy today. Don't want to do, you know. Um, <laughs> So it's very much like, yeah, but I've always gravitated towards storytelling music and that's right. how I've learned to write. Um, I think everyone has a story to tell and I think one of the coolest ways to tell it is through music and if people can relate to it, then that's so special. So that's definitely how I like to listen to music and how I like to write as well. Mm-hmm. So when did you write your first songs? My first song was called Love Me All Over Again. I don't remember how it goes, but I I was I think I was year nine, so it was a bit later that later than you would probably think, but it was year nine, and I remember I recorded it and I put it on my Facebook page because Facebook was like brand new back then, um, and I remember I remember I was in school and my best friend was like. Shara's written a song and she put it on YouTube and they all sat and watched it in class and I was so embarrassed <laughs> and I was like oh my gosh because I didn't like singing for anybody I was like no I was really nervous and really shy and I was like no 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 don't no one like listen to it but they all loved it and it was um it was really cool and from then it just kept going I've gone through phases where I've just written so many songs all at once and phases I've had a writer's block and it's kept going that was my first song that I really remember it was actually like a proper finished like this is a proper song that I've done and here you go you know mm-hmm. someone listened to it yeah um, just interesting you were saying that you go through phases of writing a lot of songs and then you have writer's block sometimes I think that's a natural creative flow like you get stuff out in a spurt and then yeah. there is a fellow period but you can start to think, oh, no, I should be writing. So mm. maybe it's just that the brain's like, I need a rest. You wrote all those songs. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. calm me down for a while. Yeah, literally. I, I'm very, like, I'm probably too emotionally driven too. Um, I probably need to get better at not being so emotionally driven with writing songs, but I will be, if I'm in a time where I'm going something really hard or something really good, I will, like, want to write about it as I'm processing it. And it really helps. Like, I think it's a gift to be able to do that because it's like I can have that almost like therapeutic time to get all this stuff out. Um, but then, yeah, like once that's done, I'll be like, oh, I just feel like numb. I'm like I have nothing to say. And then I'm like, oh, no, can I write any more songs? And then I get I suck myself out sometimes. So I'm like, I need to be able to write, write, write. But it's like you just wrote like 12 songs, Shara, it's okay. Like, <laughs> but, you know, the pressure we put ourselves under as artists, I tell you. Um, but, yeah, definitely it's like ebbs and flows, ebbs and flows, depending on the season and what's going on and how busy I am and all these kind of things that come into it. Like when I'm on tour, I don't write very much because my whole weekend is taken up um with performing which is absolutely fine with me um but yeah it's kind of like seasons for things sometimes I think as well yeah yeah absolutely so given that you've obviously written quite a few songs you have chosen some to record so um was that a process of thinking these are these are the songs I want to these are the songs that belong in the world as opposed to ones that you're just keeping for your own process maybe yeah well I think it's a I mean it's always hard to choose but I have a team of people that also help me kind of decide I I they're all my babies you know so I'm like a bit biased and I kind of have you know connections to certain songs from moments but people might always think it's you know the best song so I tend to like get my team and I'll like get like say five that I've written that I think are the better ones and I'm like which one stands out to you why what can you like imagine it sounding like you know does it make you feel something all these kind of things and it's also kind of I I like to have a message as Mm -hmm. well so that's kind of how I like to 
put songs out like some songs just for me to vent out but the world shouldn't hear them probably um but the songs I've kind of put out have been about something that I want to say to the world because that's kind of what my whole thing as an artist is it's right it's entertaining people but also wanting to say something um valuable and important as well and, and letting people you know hear hear me as well so that's kind of comes into the choice choosing process as well um mm. yeah so the single you released last year was hold on and that is very much about something that's about personal experience of yours which yeah. is with endometriosis yeah. uh the song's not directly about that in that if one's listening to the song you could actually read other things into it you could find your own experiences in it so yeah. i'm wondering at what point you decided to write that song or was that one of those songs that you just felt it and you needed to to put it out yeah, that one actually was written um, with a couple of producers, the Bantam Brothers and a guy called Royale. So that was in a time where I was I was struggling to write actually, but I wanted to, I was going through all of this stuff with Endo and I was really, really sick, <laughs> really, really sick and and hurting. And I was like, I need to put something out like about this. And I want to say something because endometriosis is something that people haven't really spoken about a, a lot more recently actually which has been really great but it's been kind of this taboo thing and one in seven women deal with this and it's mm -hmm. like how are people not talking about this more how do doctors not know what it is like mm -hmm. I've had that experience they're like I don't know what to do with you and it's like so many women have this problem mm -hmm. and so um they kind of all wrote this song about that and it can kind of, yeah, like it's, it can be, be spun different ways of like, you know, suicide and mental health, all these kind of things it can be about. But for me, I was like, this is my message. And that's kind of when I went through this whole process with the video clip creating that, it was actually footage from that process of my time. So while I was in hospital, um, my friend who, Royale, who wrote the song with me, he was like, film everything. Right. And I was like, I don't want to film myself going through this. And he was like, think of the people that will watch this that have been through the same experiences, the same hospital things, the same tests, all this kind of crap that's going on. Think about them mm -hmm. and how they will feel so good that you as an artist are writing a song about what they're going through and showing footage of stuff that they can relate to as well. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? Like if I was someone like that, I would want someone else to tell my story too, so they make me feel heard. And so we filmed everything. Um, and it was really traumatic to go through it because it was a really, really traumatic experience and really, really hard. But um, I actually got asked to perform and share my test, like my, my message at the End of Meet Trust Australia event. So the actual high tea they have in Sydney and the amount of girls that cried watching that video clip. Like it was so touching to be able to speak to people like that and tell their story and half of their problem is that they feel unheard mm. and they were like you made us feel heard from the visuals and the song put together they're like it is so powerful like thank you so much and I was like that's enough for me like that's like that that's that's success to me like it's not about all the numbers but it's about people feeling something and and telling their story as well and it was really really amazing to be able to do that mm -hmm. yeah it's also amazing actually that you've had the career you've had particularly as a dancer because for those who don't know much about endometriosis it is debilitating and uh the hospital visit you describe is probably not not the last one um you know a lot of women with endometriosis have to go in regularly for procedures um so i find it extraordinary actually that you've been able to maintain all of this just energetically because it can be really draining yeah well it's been i mean it was interesting so like what like what jason didn't know is that my first tour show it was only three weeks post my um second surgery and so I technically wasn't actually allowed to lift more than two kilos mm -hmm. and so I had had an eight centimeter cyst on my right ovary which is like a baby's head size and I'd had a terrible time I'd had infections they misdiagnosed me all of this terrible stuff happened I almost got septicemia like it was just horrific and um I was in a bad shape, but I got this tour. I was like, what am I going to do? I can't, I can't turn it down. I can't turn this opportunity down. And so I didn't tell him. And I just very, very lightly, you know, pulled my guitar over and just picked it up with my arms and sat down. And I was very subtle about it. And I just did the show and I just had to do it. 
And I told him later on and he was like, you could have told me. I was like, I didn't know you. Like, I didn't want you. I don't know who you, what you are like, you know, now he's great. He would hundred percent been supportive, but you know, he didn't, I didn't know that at the time. And so um, it was just things like that. Like I've gone on stage with my little like tens machine underneath wow. my, underneath my shirt, you know, uh, I've, I've gone on stage, like running to the bathroom um first was just before I got on stage and just after you know things like that it's just it's been this little journey but um I'm actually working with a naturopath now and she's basically saying I'm kind of in remission because I've got all my hormones balanced um which has been a really really hard thing to to get to the point where I'm doing that but she's like you're doing really well and I haven't had that many issues since then so I've been pretty lucky and consistent um and I tell girls I'm like when they ask me what I'm doing I'm like this is what I'm doing like see if this works for you because you know everyone's different but it, it's a problem that I think there'll be so much more research go into um that people will actually be able to find ways to really help these girls mm -hmm. it's so like it's so debilitating like yeah I'll be able to get out of bed not be able to move for two days like it's not okay absolutely not okay that girls are going through that and they don't talk about it because it's this taboo thing and it's like oh you can't talk about periods and it's like every second person in the world has them like <laughs> let's talk about it you know it's bizarre but I've had people on tour I've had old ladies on tour say you can't talk about this right. and I'm like sorry like <laughs> who says can't I mean that's the other who thing says, like, what are you gonna do <laughs> yeah. like I'm probably gonna keep talking about it I'm sorry like I've had, I've had more people thank me than not so um yeah that's just in telling my story and I'm allowed to do that telling a story and changing the broader story and um, you mentioned a tens machine and for anyone who doesn't know what that is it's used in labor as in childbirth <laughs> labor so that's how bad your pain is you're using something that's meant to be used for yeah. labor pains. it's little zaps it's, ama it's amazing it's like a warm hug for my like belly and my pelvis <laughs> <laughs> that's good it's terrible that you have to use it <laughs> um, the, the warm hug makes it sound so much better <laughs> yeah, I have endo, i'm telling you get a tens machine <laughs> Good tip. Um, but um, you have re you have released two other songs since then, and uh, Coming Home was released earlier this year. What's that about? Coming Home um, was about when I moved from Perth to Sydney to pursue music, and it's just this really fun country track um, that I I loved writing and I loved um, producing with a guy called Josh Schubert, and he mm -hmm. pretty much it was kind of a a time where I got to kind of take control in the studio um before that I'd kind of gone okay someone just produced a song for me however you want it but this was me being like I know what sound I like I know what I want to do I know like my messaging um and I kind of went through this whole kind of process where I was like I'm do doing this and I'm going to make my own music and mm -hmm. so I got to walk in the studio with Josh and he has every instrument he could think of on the walls and he can play all of them live drums all these guitar, slide guitar, all these banjos, things like that. And he goes, pick what you want and let's put on a track. And so we got to just play. It was like a playground um, and it was so fun. It was an absolutely amazing experience. And he really, really was just there and just um, supported me through it and played everything I wanted to play. And I love, love that song for that reason. It was just a little journey for me to kind of be like, I can do this. You know, I know what I like. I know what sounds I like. This is awesome. And um, yeah, it's all about how you can make home anywhere. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you move away, um, if you're away from family, things like that, it's like home is where people support and love you and you can rest and you can make that anywhere if you move away from your family and things like that. So that's what that's about. But um, yeah, super fun, super fun experience making that song. I'll never forget it ever. It was really, really cool. Well, and I, was, I think you also worked with Josh on Four Chord Song, your latest single. Yeah. Is that right? So obviously it was yeah. so fun you went back. Absolutely. Off. Yeah. That was um that was that was a whole different experience. All right. Um that was me going through a very messy um end of a relationship that I walked away from. And I walked in because I had to write another song for this tour. And I was like, I need a song to put out. But I was going through all of this rubbish stuff mm -hmm. <laughs> and walked into the studio and I said, all right, let's write a song. You know, he's like, yep, let's do it. And we were just coming, just walls. It wasn't really clicking. Mm -hmm. I was on a good space. So that's probably why. And he's like, you know what? Let's just, let's just start from scratch. 
and he gets his gets his pad his notepad he's an old school and he gets his notepad okay. out and he gets his pen I, I'm a typer when I write so I was oh. like oh we're writing okay yeah <laughs> and he goes what's going on in your world Shara and I was like you don't want to know Josh you don't want to know and he's like oh I do I absolutely do <laughs> And I just vented to him, told him all this, all this story, told him everything. And he's just writing and he's like, oh my gosh, yeah. Oh, that's terrible. And just writing, writing, writing. And he goes, this is a song. And I said, probably, yeah. I just haven't been able to write about it yet because it's been so messy. And he was like, no, this is a song. And we just like picked out certain words and phrases that I'd said and literally put a song together from like a diary entry that I had just blurted out to him. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's, it was it was really a different experience to write a song like that but we wrote it in the, we wrote it and produced it within three weeks so it was quick turnaround but it was yeah it was it was actually a lot of fun to be able to write something like that and be able to get a song that when I went through this whole relationship which turned out to be quite toxic in the end it made me realize the importance of having music that you can like relate to in a time where it's like going through something sad I never really got that because I hadn't really gone through something like this before but I turn on I get in the car and I turn on the radio or put a song on I'd be like oh my gosh this is my story like this is what I'm feeling and I would sing it and scream it and cry to it and I was like music is so powerful I was like wow like music is so powerful and so I just said to Josh like I want to write a song like that that I can tell my story and I can other girls can sing and scream and cry too because it's the same thing that happened to them. And I hope that's what it is because I still scream and sing and cry to that song, my folklore song in the car sometimes. Um, but yeah, it was, yeah, a whole experience, that one. Yeah, and I quite like the central message of it because I think from memory the chorus is you're nothing but a four, four chord song or something along those lines. I was like, without, without you tonight, without you tonight kind of feels like a four chord song. That's right, yeah. Yeah. It's not like, yeah. That's, that's a it's a really evocative statement <laughs> it's, it's simple and direct yeah uh, but so much wrapped around it I found yeah yeah well I think about a four chord song as I, I explain it I'm like a four chord song when you're learning an instrument you learn like four chords and you can play most songs because it's simple and it's easy and everyone knows it and it feels good yeah. and so when you walk away from someone that is not good for you mm -hmm. it feels simple and it's like ah. Oh, Okay. And it's like, if a relationship is going a way that both, both people aren't, it's not going well, then for both of your sake, like walk away because yeah. that person is not happy and this person is not happy. And it's like, if your lives aren't compatible, if, if you're not able to do things that you love and need to do, like for me, like it was like music and dancing. I was like, I need to do this. I love this. And if someone is just by up against that, way too many times it's like okay our lives aren't compatible you mm -hmm. want to do this i want to do this it's okay it's like it's not going to work and you can walk away and it's hard to walk away mm -hmm. super hard but having that freedom back that i i didn't have um that was like oh okay i can write about anything i can go back and i can do this and i can do this and i can you know it's simple yeah. and it's simple and it's like somebody will be able to manage my life and all the things I'm doing eventually that person couldn't and that's okay let's just you know maneuver and and have this feeling that I have now of like it's simple and it's easy and not, not relationships shouldn't be simple and easy all the time I get that but it shouldn't be that fighting up all the time and that kind of feeling so that's definitely the way to go <laughs> <laughs> I concur with that assessment now you You've still um, got some work ahead of you with Jason, I think. Um, so what's happening with that tour? Yes. Yeah, so we've got one more weekend um, in Bathurst and then I am pretty much booked out every weekend, I think, to end December um, between dancing and singing and shows and festivals. And then I've kind of got my own thing going on, which will be probably early next year, where I've kind of put my two worlds of singing and dancing together. Okay. So that's a very fresh thing. Um, we just did a promotional video for it. Um, a couple of my dancer friends of mine who have got on board with my vision um, mm -hmm. and they're like, we want to be part of this. And so we're just prom promoting that now to venues and things like that to see if we can put a show on, which is 
very exciting because that's something else you know that I've wanted to do for a really long time and just haven't been able to so that's kind of in the works um as well so one thing ends to it ends another thing begins <laughs> <laughs> and I imagine you'll also be planning some more writing and recording yes well I'm planning on doing an EP um of five songs probably by February March next year so Josh and I are actually in the studio next weekend um recording a song called Heart No Sleeve which is a bit of a sad track but it's kind of like my vision for this EP is to kind of tell the story of of like this relationship and just other relationships I've kind of been through and um, my idea is that I don't want to go through this again and so I want to write about it now while I'm in it and feeling all these emotions and then I can kind of like move on um but I want to kind of get this kind of where I'm at basically into music and put it out and mm. I feel like as I go through life the more things I go through the more kind of things I write about but it's like I kind of want to write about what I'm doing now and what I'm feeling now and all these things while I'm in it and not mm. miss that kind of opportunity um yeah. all about being in the moment so I feel like I'm going to write like that a little bit so it's kind of this little journey of um five songs have an idea of you know the journey of like the dead lows and the highs and how that works and um telling a little story and uh yeah hopefully by February March that'll be coming out which is pretty exciting I mean I've only put singles out so far so having a little five song EP um will be pretty cool and it sounds like that is true to what you were saying about how you are as a performer you want to be authentic because the audience can tell if you aren't otherwise and it sounds like yeah. your songwriting and the songs you're releasing very much uh, on, well, I was going to say on brand, but that's such a trite phrase, but you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's all about the branding. I'm telling you, everyone says that. It's on Shara Rose brand. I'm like, it's me. It's what I'm feeling. Therefore it's on brand. <laughs> no, I've become too lazy using that phrase. Like, is it on brand? No, no. <laughs> uh, but no, you saw, you can hear also in your voice, because um, you have such a strong singing voice, but it is a really warm and direct voice. And so it sounds to me on your songs like you really are, in the right place if that makes sense as, as an artist and that yeah. you're that you know you're you're connecting with people yeah I, I really hope so I mean that's my whole thing I just so far people have came with my music different people have like just felt things from my music in different age groups and different people from different walks of life and it's it's so cool like it, it means the world to me like my favorite part of the show is going out afterwards and talking to people and meeting them and hearing their stories as well and you know when I hear like I, I met a young girl recently and she's like I listened to hold on going through my own hospital experience on repeat I just had that song playing and I'm like oh are you serious and then like I get girls after the show and guys and I, I play four chord song they're like that is my story and I'm like yes I'm so glad and like I feel for you let's talk about it you know it's like it's like <laughs> we become, we'll become friends you know because it's like I'm just telling my story tell me yours I, I love people and so if I can make them feel something and give them a memory and hopefully some good memories too that's kind of my whole my whole kind of message and give them some hope as well my whole thing is I can give people some hope whether that's be through be able to tell their story or you know an inspiring song like hold on you know it comes in different ways and I've experienced that myself with other artists so I want to just kind of keep keep the ball rolling in my own journey and um and give them a great night and a great time as well I think that's the perfect note to end on <laughs> <laughs> it's been an absolute delight to talk to you Shara and I hope to hear more music from you very soon absolutely you will thank you so much thanks